Take 74. Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Today is all about a fresh versus frozen hamburger. We're gonna keep it very simple, okay? The point is, you guys walk into the grocery store just like I do. It could be marketing, it could be just because it was the time of day when I bought it. The point is, I'm as curious as you guys are because you've been asking, today's the day. Fresh versus frozen, does it matter? We're about to find out. This is the deal. Here we go. It in all this glory. Yes, I know there's other kinds out there. Honestly, in my deep opinion, it doesn't matter. They're probably relatively close enough, okay? I see these and the image to me jumps off the screen. Maybe it's just me. I was in the grocery store. I really couldn't find anything that I really wanted to make. I found this really nice beef and we did beef two ways. You guys can check out that video. The point is this also was speaking to me and I'm like, and then it, the comments keep going in the back of my head. Hey, have you tried this? Have you tried that? And I'm like, you know what? What the heck? Let's just, let's try it out, right? So I've got regular 80, 20 ground beef and I've got these frozen patties. I'm keeping it simple. You guys make the burger the way you like to make it today. It's just really honestly all about simple. The wind is blowing 89 miles per hour. So when you guys ask me about wind guards, just to let you know, my griddle is uh, up a little bit more than low, maybe like a low medium not even a medium low low medium there is a difference uh but i'm i'm kind of protected so if you guys hear the wind hustling around us um that's pretty good in my point uh, we're gonna get some it looks like some gust of winds coming through here that might change the audio it's just cooking outdoors all right enough talk let's get started i don't know what to expect i do know that you're supposed to cook these to an internal temperature of 160 which means your burger has to be cooked through I'm okay with that. Whatever. These are uh, six, four pounds, 12 extra large patties, 5.3 ounces each. Um, uh, $14, $15, something like that. So just right under a dollar a piece. And it does say you're actually supposed to cook them frozen from frozen. from frozen steak now there's a lot of times where we uh caution you guys do not cook frozen foods on the griddle these two patties will not make a difference i can assure you that just because it's they're not very big it's not a large volume correct absolutely did i say correct like right and correct at the same time <laughs> all right I, uh if you guys use your little egg mold silicone i like the silicone way better than i do the hard metal ones it's gonna hold just about the same amount once you flatten it all down. And it gives you a good portion, right? They're all kind of uniform. So there's one, not too much. There's two. And then from there, we're just gonna patten it out. Pat it out and flatten it out at the same time. Patten. Patten it out. You're... I'm on a roll today. It took us 17 takes just to say, hey guys, I have no idea how much they're going to shrink up. That looks pretty close. All right, something like that. My guess is, I don't know if it matters which one you start with. Let me go wash my hands. All right, for season today, I'm bringing back the old Lucky right here, Cavenders. That's what I started with. That's still one of my favorites. Sid Sure Shot, Sure Shot Sids. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> it's the, it's the gunpowder, and I really like it because it reminds you of charcoal. So we're seasoning the frozen. Yep. All right, let me show you this real quick before we get started. I know we get a lot of people get ask about our spatulas and we just ordered the new star. This is my favorite, uh, but they've been out of stock on this for at least a year, it seems like, but they have a black handled one. So I'm trying it out. Uh, before I comment and say, hey, just get the black handled one, then I wanted to try it out myself before I relate that to you guys so I'm not steering you wrong. So we're gonna give it a try. All right, nothing crazy, guys. We're just cooking hamburgers. Uh, 
Man, that just sounds good. <laughs> sounds like a brick. <laughs> you put that seasoned side down, that way it gives you the opportunity to season the other side. And this is just basically the decision that we've come up with. I do not like my burgers well done. Um, I don't mind eating like medium rare burgers. But since these say that you have to cook them through and they're frozen, we made the conscious decision to cook our frozen burgers all the way through. To be fair, I'm just going to cook the other burgers all the way through as well, just to see. I mean, I'm not going to cook 100 burgers to see if I like them. I should know right away. All right, my guess is that the frozen burgers need just a little bit longer than the fresh burgers. Obviously, you're talking about two different starting temperatures. I can understand that. I will say this. Um, if you guys haven't yet, check us out on The Grover Group on Facebook. It's where we talk about food, go back and forth. I got tagged the other day, and it said, what are my thoughts? And the tag going back and forth, a lot of people were, can you get a crust on a, on a burger that's not spat, uh, smashed? My immediate response was yes. How good of a crust probably depends on how patient you are, just like a smash burger, right? You don't want to go flipping back and forth. you got to allow the burger to sit on the flat top and develop that crust. Will it be 100% edge-to-edge -edge as crunchy as a smash burger? Probably not, but you're splitting hairs. You know, if you want to go juicy, you can still get a crust. Smash burgers can still be juicy. I know there's a thing out there. Anyways, let me show you. We haven't touched them. We haven't flipped them. You guys can see what we're dealing with. We let them sit. Still got to get the crust off. Ooh. See that? I mean, that's beautiful right there. That's a lot of crust. That's perfect. Let's go and flip these. Wow. <laughs> that looks pretty good. I didn't expect it. I definitely did not expect a frozen ground beef patty to have the same crust as fresh. Not at all. I just assumed there was a lot of moisture in there. Wow. Wow. Woo! And that's exactly why you do these tests. Now they were sitting on the griddle a long time. What do you think? Maybe five minutes? Five yeah. whole minutes? Yeah, but that's what you want, right? I mean, it's not the fact I'm against flipping your burger multiple times. You, you can flip your burger as much as you want, but you gotta to get the crust. You gotta let you gotta leave it alone, right? So just like with crunchy hash browns or a good crust, patience and oils or butter is key, right? So the fat, when it renders out of your burger, is creating its own juices for it to fry in, and that's how you get that Maillard reaction. Ooh. Here's the storm. What you put on your burger is completely up to you. I'm not here to argue with you about what goes on and what doesn't. We're gonna make it the way we like it. Each one is gonna be done exactly the same. I'm just gonna do one to show you. All right guys, so the moment of the truth. We got the frozen and we got the fresh. Open them up for you. Very simple. Very simple. All right, here we go. You wanna take the first bite? Yeah. See what you think. You gotta watch me cook a frozen burger. Mm. A lot of juice. Oh, it's actually good. Huh? It's good. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm. 
I'm not good. <laughs> I mean, I guess you're thinking in the back of your mind. There's no way it can be as good, which is probably the way I was leaning. Sometimes about convenience. Sometimes about people coming in for holidays. You want to throw something on the griddle real quick. 15 burgers compact like that. Mm -hmm. Take them to a camping event. Something like that. Are they worth it? Are they worth the hassle? They're very similar. That one is very good too. I really like the seasoning. The combination of those two seasonings I think is really good on the burger. I picked the fresh. It's better. I think the fresh is better. Yes. But is the frozen bad? No. 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 Be cautious now. You can't throw them all in the griddle at the same time. It's a lot of frozen food, so I would be cautious about that. But the overall aspect of it is not bad. It's tender. It does not taste like the meat's been processed together like sometimes a lot of uh, frozen foods do. And I think just the convenience factor, like if you buy a pack of 12 and put them in the freezer and then you just want to open up the freezer and cook one burger real quick. I mean, yeah. that is very convenient instead of having to buy a whole pound of ground beef. That is good. Well, I get honest with you. I was really hoping my video would go the other way. But that's what happens when you have a preset notion of what's going to happen. I really, really thought the ground beef fresh was going to run away with it hands down. But They're both good. <laughs> Try those seasonings. <laughs> There's no way in the world. I mean, one good beer in you, you can't tell the difference. Anyways. <laughs> Hey guys, we have a membership uh, button. It's the join button down below. It's just basically a way you guys can help out the channel. Uh, we thank each and every one for you doing that. Matter of fact, it's where I got this idea. You guys told me, have you ever used Frozen? And it keeps popping up in like different threads that you guys tagged me on. And I'm always like, no, I would never use Frozen. But after today, I'm not saying I wouldn't, but I definitely keep it in my freezer for the girls in case they wanted a burger while I had something different. I wouldn't care at all. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. My wife just took a bite and it dribbled all down her jacket. No. It's a shame that she can't, no. that you guys can't see. Yeah, it is. <laughs>